All right, jumping right back into where we left off. Uh, we just created, uh, we had our image block, which has a caption, and we have this sort of CTA block that allows us to have text, title, button, and a page to go to, as well as an image and some alignment options, left, right, and centered. Uh, next, I want to create a gallery block. A gallery block will essentially be a way we can have a collection of image blocks um, so that we can kind of show things in a grid or a carousel or whatever that, whatever we kind of want. Uh, so let us make that. Um, we're going to open up our global, uh, no, what is it? It's uh, blocks, blocks.py. Um, and uh, alphabetically, we're at C, uh, uh, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I. So it would, it would go here. Um, gallery block. And it is going to be a struct. Uh, it's going to inherit struct block. Um, and it's going to have something called images. And it is going to be actually what's called a list block, blocks.list block. And in here, we can actually pass in what type of block we want to allow. And in this case, we're going to allow, um, we're going to actually, I'm not going to allow this. I am actually going to use the built in blocks.image chooser block because I don't really care about having a caption of like each image. Uh, but of course, we can have a caption on the whole gallery blocks.text block blank equals true um, require actually I can just do required equals false um, what else do we want uh, I think yeah let's let's do this let's kind of have a few different sizes um, so this will be a choice block and uh, we're gonna fill that in a minute as well as uh, aspect ratio um, and we'll just call aspect and it will be blocks.choice block and we'll fill that out after. Uh, let's just get our metadata done. So meta icon equals, uh, I like the table icon for something like this because it's kind of like a grid and template block slash uh, block gallery, which we will make right now just so we have it. And then we'll get a couple other uh, things done. Uh, we will make our CSS file for that, our CSS file block uh, gallery.scss and we'll make sure that in our app.scss we have the gallery here. So we'll keep it alphabetical. Okay, so we got these guys set up, at least good to go. And we can just do block gallery just to keep anything we style scope within that. Okay, so choice blocks. We need to obviously give different types of choices. So I'm gonna go back to my enums that we've already made. And we're going to make a new class, and this will be called, uh, let's do size first, um, size, and it's also model.text choices. And let's do uh, small, hey, look at that, medium <laughs> and large. Look at that, <laughs> it's amazing. Uh, okay, thanks, GitHub Copilot. Uh, I do have GitHub Copilot running on this project, and it's proving to be helpful at times and also getting in my way with mistakes at times and it's lovely. If you haven't watched my video yet about uh, Django with Copilot, my like first look at it, uh, definitely check it out. It's uh, full of surprises. Uh, lastly, we're gonna make aspect and it's also models.text uh, choices. Uh, and um, what do we want for this? Uh, we can have, let's have um, original. So that's like we want to use the original aspect ratio of whatever images we put in. And we have to give it a uh, kind of like a value and a label. That's the label. Uh, let's do a square. So we'll crop everything to a nice square. Portrait. 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 Landscape A. There we go. It, it helped. And to keep our alphabeticalness happening, um, this will go right here. We'll save and everything's groovy. So now over here in our gallery block, uh, the size we can use um, our, now we have to import in these things now, size and aspect. So let's go here and we will make the choices equal to, I think that's how we do it, right? Yes, um, and actually let's just do it the simple way this time, um, size.choices, because uh, I do want to use them all. Uh, before we kind of had to do it this way if we wanted it to be really nice, 
um, because we didn't actually want all of our alignments, but we can actually just go size.choices, which is a property of the uh, text choices model that we're inheriting, and it will just give us back all of them. So that's really easy. And we can choose a default and uh, size.large seems like a fine default. Um, sure. Choices equal uh, aspect dot choices and default is equal to aspect dot. Um, let's use I guess, let's use original as the default. Okay. So now we have the uh, this right here. Uh, oh, image chooser block. Right. Um, that actually isn't a built-in like default wagtail block. It is from wagtail.images, so I, sh I shouldn't have that uh, namespace for dot blocks. Just there we go, and we will. Oh, we also need to also add this here as uh, something we can do. Gallery, gallery block. So Python manage.py uh, make migrations because we made some changes and we will migrate it and hopefully it all worked. Awesome. Let's go back here. Now I'm probably going to be logged out because uh, I have something, an issue with my Redis, I believe is the uh, culprit. And anytime we have some weird error, I get logged out. We'll fix it eventually. Let's just try not to have errors. Okay. So now, um, Let's just, I'm just going to clean stuff up. We're going to get rid of this guy. Uh, we'll keep, we'll keep that one, but let's add our gallery now. So we have gallery here and this is kind of cool. We can choose an image, uh, but you can actually within the same gallery, go and add more images. And we'll just go like this and go like this. Cool. Three images is good. Uh, caption. Um, this is a gallery and we will use large size and uh, let's start with original. And if we publish that and come back, we are going to see nothing changed. And that's because our HTML file is empty. So block.gallery. And here um, we are, let's put our gallery inside a container. Again, we're using Bootstrap. Um, before this, actually, uh, I do want to import in my tags uh, uh, that, so I can use them. So let's load wagtail core tags and wagtail images tags so we are have a container that's great um then we're going to have a row okay and then inside our row um we are going to essentially loop through all those images so we can go for block in self dot images and let's just test this by writing the word test and if or and for and let's just make sure that we should see that three times and that's because we have three images so we're off to the races here okay um now what we can do is because we have uh just to see these side by side we're essentially and actually the enums we're allowing these different sizes of images um or sorry different aspects of images original square portrait landscape. So what I'm going to do is actually make a if statement here. If block dot aspect, um, because we, we don't want to actually be talking, mm, wait, sorry, if self dot aspect. So I, I'm not talking about the aspect of this image. I'm talking about what we configured on the entire, this entire block itself. Uh, so if self dot aspect is equal to original, and we'll just do, uh, I'll just do an end if for now, but we'll probably change that. Uh, then we're going to create an image uh, using block um, because this is, each of these blocks is the image within it because we're looping within self dot images. So we go image block, and when it's original, um, I still want to like resize this. I don't want to actually use the original original um, image. Uh, uh, size because it could be huge so let's just set sort of a width of maybe like 720 and because we're saying width 720 it's actually going to um, resize and keep the same aspect ratio which is exactly what we want an original aspect ratio um, but it will still make it like a reasonable size and we'll just call this as image um, and then instead of an end if we're actually gonna, i'll keep this end if because we will need it eventually uh, let's just make some space and then we can go l if um, 
and image block or sorry elif self dot aspect is equal to what do we have we have square and in that case and let's just do let, let's uh just so we don't have to type as much I'm going to grab this. Uh, I'm actually going to grab this and put it in here, even though we'll be changing that each time. We're just going to do uh, a few of these. Uh, sorry, elif, 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 and I think I think that's going to be all of them. So if it is size original, and I can um, what's cleaner? That's probably fine. Uh, so if it is square we actually want to use, let's use the fill here so that we don't lose any of the image or so that we don't, it still looks good. Uh, so we'll make it 720 by 720. So there's just a wagtail shorthand for saying, give me an image, make sure it fills within the, this container I'm supplying of 720, 720. Um, otherwise, what are our other ones? We have portrait. And in that case, we would still use fill, but instead of it being, um, 720 by 720 we might do uh fill of in portrait we want it to be maybe it's like 540 by 720 and let's copy this it's gonna be similar else if landscape and i'll paste this here and uh we want to reverse these so this would be like 720 oops by 540 and then we have right now all we've done you know we're not rendering an image yet we've just kind of created this uh this thing here. So then after all these end ifs, um, and in fact, uh, well, we know, we know those are the only four options. We don't really need like a last condition. Um, so I'm not going to worry about it, but let's make a div with a class of call column six, um, and give it some padding. So when they stack, it'll look good of, uh, on the Y axis too. Um, and we can go image and give it a source of, image.url so that's this image here that we've made and we can still give it an alt text of image.alt um, and then i might want to uh, just so i can style this in css i'm also going to give it a class of aspect the word aspect dash and then whatever our block uh, dot as or sorry self dot aspect is that way we can style these things a little bit differently in css um, and then we can do that sort of uh, the very end of all this, uh, still within this row, I think. Mm. No, I think outside of the row. Uh, let's just put a p tag here and do self.caption, uh, but we'll go if self.caption. And if, boom. Okay, so if we look at this now, it's not gonna look beautiful, but it should, uh, should render some stuff. It'll take a minute on the first try because it's going to create all these images for us. So there we have our images um, lined up. Um, not great because uh, we need some CSS on these things to make stuff look good, which we'll get to in a minute. Uh, but it is uh, using the original aspect ratio. Now, if we were to very quickly uh, just change this to let's use square, for instance. And um, I'll just publish. And come back here and it'll take a minute because it has to make new renditions for the first time you'll see these are actually all squares now it doesn't quite look like it and that's just because we have the images at their they're just still going to their normal size which is 720 by 720 what we decided because uh, we're not using css to be like you know stay within your bounds um, but they are squares um this one's just overlapping this one right now so let's uh let's do some css so we already made this file luckily uh block gallery so within here, um, we can just say we want our images always to be a width of 100%. And if we reload, we'll see now they, they do do that. So that's good. They're not getting stuck outside. Um, and yeah, that's that's all right. So this is kind of like, you know, we'd make an image grid. Uh, we could, of course, play with this a bit more, maybe our... Instead of a column six, we actually think, you know, column three would work fine, in which case they would kind of, you know, go like this. Uh, we might also want to make that something that's configurable. Who knows? But I think that's fine. Now, um, what I'm going to do for these is also, whoa, look at that. I'm going to just, I mean, it took some, 
it did some stuff. Uh, it's basically saying if the if there's an image dot file, um, we use the image dot file dot URL. Now that's not quite right, and in fact, we only an if we already know there is an image, so um, we're just gonna make the href. Um, uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. Actually, okay, I see what's happening here. Let's. So um, this will technically work, but what I think, so what I'm trying to do is make it so when you click on the link, it actually opens up uh, the image in like a new tab and that could eventually be replaced by a light box. Now my uh, my AI automatically added some, looks like some angular or, oh no, this isn't angular. It's just a, it's just a data targets for some kind of light box effect. Um, I'm gonna get rid of this class that it added at least. Um, and instead of using image, we wanna use, um, Maybe we wait. Let's maybe it is that. No, uh, block in self dot images image block. Yeah, no, this is okay. This should work. Block dot file dot URL. So if I scroll over this, you actually see it is going to. Uh, it's hard to see on the stream because it's really small, but it's actually using the original images slash friendship dot jpeg. So what I actually did, and if I click on it, um, if I click on it, oh, because this data toggle modal is something that uh, that bootstrap is overriding and trying to do stuff but I don't have anything to do that so let's go like this and this is going to load that full actual image now in this case I probably uh, want to make this for now open in blank but I'll probably make it a light box at some point but anyways you get the idea we wrap these and this will actually bring you to the original one of it which is pretty cool it's fairly cool Okay, so that's that. Uh, let's make a really, really, really simple block because uh, it's something that you might want to use a lot and uh, it's really, really simple. Uh, so we're going to create uh, what I'm going to call the divider block. And this will be something so we can create a divider anywhere in our uh, in our content. Blocks, oops, sorry, blocks dot struct block. And the divider block, um, is not going to have many options. I'm gonna just give it an option called is full width. And it's gonna be a blocks.boolean block. We haven't seen this one before, but it's pretty obvious. Um, it is a yes or no, it's gonna be a checkbox. And for our meta, um, meta, we're gonna give it an icon and there happens to be an icon called horizontal rule in Wagtail, just all one word, which is perfect for this and template block divider. And we need to make sure that we are allowing divider to be in the club. And I should have actually, sorry, named this properly. Divider block, divider. And in our divider HTML, which we have not made yet, block divider .html, I'm gonna start just by doing an HR tag. That's literally what it's gonna be. Uh, we should also, um, have a CSS tag for that, uh, a CSS file for keeping this convention. So let's do it. Not a CSS, and we need to, of course, include that. Um, and we'll go block divider because that will be will allow us to scope, and we can say HRs specifically. You know, maybe they have a height of two pixels and a background color of, and I'll just do like CCC, it's a nice light gray. Okay, so we have that, we have the HTML for it, which is just an HR, and, um, and we need to make our migrations. Uh, can't open, oh, I forgot a word, Python manage.py, make migrations, and migrate. Okay, then uh, let's go back here and probably got logged out. I think the logout might have something to do with, my guess right now is when I am doing a database migration, I seem to get logged out. And it's probably because I'm using SQLite. Um, probably some weird stuff happens with the database because it's kind of like a fake database in my opinion, um, but we'll live with it for now. Uh, so we should see here, let, let's put it in a, a logical spot. I can go right here and actually click divider. Uh, we have this checkbox. We'll get into that in a minute. And uh, let's go here. 
And now we see this lovely divider that we made. Um, now in my CSS, you might not be able to see this, but it seems to have a border. And I'm just gonna give it a border of none. So that just looks more flat. And there, that looks better. Now this is full width thing. Um, essentially what I wanna do is I wanna go if self dot full or is full width. And I actually wanna go if not self dot full width, I actually want to do press pass in a container um, right there. And we can go and if, and then I'm just going to literally copy this again and just make this a closing div. So basically uh, we wanna put this container, that's just a bootstrap class that puts stuff kind of in a wrap. And if we go here, uh, also, uh, Let's make sure my block divider has a width of 100%. So right now it is constricted within this wrapper, which is kind of like this 1200 pixels or so, depending on uh, what screen size we are. And if we edit this guy and find this and go is full width, this may or may not work. Let's find out, publish. It does not. And I think it's actually just because I have another, probably my base HTML maybe. Um, yeah, see I have uh, in my main, I already have a container class. Let's get rid of that because I only want to put containers when I, you know, when I want them, which is going to create some other issues that we can fix. But you'll see this does go full width now. Uh, so this image guy here, let's just go to our image block. Let's just make sure that uh, this whole thing is wrapped in a container. I think my other stuff already was. So yeah, we're pretty good there. So then we can kind of have something that's like, this is full width. Um, awesome. Another type of block that I have in mind is a header block, allowing you to kind of put headings, um, you know, within here. Uh, obviously we kind of have these like subheadings and you could just in the rich text editor kind of like make large size text. Uh, but if I want something to specifically make headings, um, it could be helpful. Uh, it would go here because we're going to call it heading block, heading block, blocks dot struct block. And our heading block will have, you know, the actual text. Uh, I'm going to call it body. Um, and it won't be a rich text block. It'll be just a text block. We don't want you to be able to add bolds and stuff because we're going to control the styling with CSS. Um, but I want some things like alignment. Uh, so we can use blocks.choice block, and we're gonna use choices. And this time we're just gonna say alignment.choices. So we get us all the options. And let's use, I think, center as a default, you know, in the heading. Also for size, let's do blocks.choice, blocks.choice block. And choices are going to be equal to sizes.choices. That's something we made previously. And uh, large by default, sure. Give it our meta info. Uh, so its icon will be title. That's another icon we can use. And it's template blocks block the heading. Okay, a bit of uh, boilerplate stuff here. We need to make our block underscore heading dot HTML. Cool. And then we want to go to our uh, source SCSS blocks new file block heading dot SCSS block heading all the same as before and in our app.scss block heading and put it there a b c d e f g h yep yeah, h comes after okay then um let's make our migrations and oh right no changes detected and that is because we never uh put it in this default blocks uh, and what this is this is just something we can reuse in different page templates and in our flex page, which is the model we're kind of working on right now, we are just pulling in default. So because we didn't actually um, add it in here or um, in this case, add it here, uh, heading, it was like nothing changed. But now if we go like this, we will see something changed and we will migrate that change and everything should be good. Now I will be logged out based on my based on my theory of when we do a database migration, I got logged out. And I think that theory is correct. 
So let's uh, let's actually try and fix that issue right now. Uh, so I'm using, this is all local right now, but I do have a Heroku database already set up. Um, and uh, it's just like a free database and I can actually, and I, I'm gonna, uh, you will be able to see my credentials technically, but this is not gonna be the one I'm actually using. I will be creating a new one. Um, I just wanna see if this will solve our issue. Just out of curiosity. Okay, uh, so I can just grab this URI. Uh, I'm going to be pasting this into my environment file, uh, which controls all my settings, just replacing my database URL. I will pause for one second while I do that because there are some more sensitive credentials in there. All right, I have uh, changed my database and when the server auto restarted, uh, it's telling me all these issues. And that's because we have a blank database right now. Um, and in fact, if I try and go back to this site now, <clears throat> it's just not going to work. It's like, hey, programming error, this doesn't exist. So um, we don't have to make migrations again, but we actually have to migrate based on the existing uh, migrations. So this is going to go, and this is actually going to hit my remote database. And it's a little bit slow when I'm working remote, and chances are I will revert back to using SQLite and try and fix it another way, because locally uh, it's faster to work with a local database, naturally. Uh, but I, I do want to make sure that this is the issue. So it's just running through. It's actually doing just the wagtail uh, migrations right now. Um, they have a whole bunch. So it's a very big project. And then eventually it will get into our R's. There we go. Oh, uh, okay, example flex that these are all our migrations that we made. Um, then there's a third party one called tag it because it's just a library I have in this project. And some wagtail images stuff, our homepage. And it applies and then applies some more things. <laughs> All right, I opted to just pause because it did take another um, 90 seconds or so. I didn't want to bore you with, but it finished. Uh, now I have to create a super user because uh, I need to be able to log into the back end, create super user. That's just a Django thing. And we'll use that. I'll give it a password. Okay. So now we have this lovely database set up. Uh, if you tried to steal the credentials, go ahead, because um, I have already uh, re re renewed those. Uh, so go away, hackers. OK. Um, doo -doo -doo -doo. Uh, now we are still running the server. I'm just going to restart it. And if we go back here now, we should at least see, welcome to your new Wagtail site. So because all the content is database driven, we've actually essentially lost uh, you know, all this lovely content we made uh, and obviously our login session um, because that user doesn't even exist. Uh, so I'm going to try to log in just to make sure I can. Now, this is a little bit slower because of the remote database, but uh, what I want to test is making sure I stay logged in after making a database migration. So um, maybe to do that, uh, let's create uh, another block. Uh, I'm going to create one called um, let's call it code snippet block. And this should be, oh, what was that? Hang on it. Cool. I like that. I'm keeping it. One day I'm just going to like do a stream where I build a website or something only using Google or uh, GitHub um, Copilot and just see what it makes me. Uh, code block, let's put it, I think, what's a CTA? Oh, it's actually going to be our first one. Because uh, obviously on my website, I'm going to want to have some uh, some code. Um, and uh, I'm going to call it code blocks. Now, there's actually something called a raw HTML block, which I'd rather use for this. Raw HTML block. There we go. And um, let us, yeah, let's. I think that's all we kind of need. Um, and again, I'm mostly just, I mean, I'm making this because I want to make it, but at this moment, we kind of took a pause to, uh, we haven't finished this guy yet, but I want to see if I get logged out uh, when we do a migration. Uh, so we're going to call this code, and we're going to say, in fact, let's just call it, just to keep the convention code snippet, and we'll use code snippet block. And let's just go and go Python make, manage.py, make migrations. 
and we will run migrate. So you'll see it is, it's, it's kind of slow uh, because I am using a remote database. I am, ah, oh, I did still get logged out. This is interesting. Okay, I'm okay with it. Uh, we will solve that, um, but what I'm gonna do is actually, uh, I'm gonna pause just so database credentials and stuff uh, don't get exposed. Uh, I'm gonna revert back to using SQLite because it's faster and, uh, and, and we'll be back in a sec. Did you miss me? I'm back. Uh, so I'm back to my SQL Lite database, uh, that logout issue. I can live with it for now because um, it only happens when we do a migration, whatever. I know my password. We're good. Uh, so let's go back here. Uh, too many values to unpack. Wow. So that's probably on the heading block, I imagine. Uh, or which which one is it? Um, uh, or it, be, it could be because we made we made this and I never did the meta. It could be because of this. We'll, we'll figure out what it is, but I definitely need this. Um, sorry, class meta. And we're going to give it an icon of, this actually an icon call code. Whoa, whoa. Template equals that. We'll make that file. Code, uh, block code snippet.html. And uh, bear with me as we make block code snippet dot scss block code snippet this should be a class um so yeah the way uh you'll see it's kind of weird because there's a dash here and an underscore here um this gets auto generated by wagtail based on your block name it always appends block dash and then your block is uh underscore driven so it kind of looks funny but um this just allows us to scope things and um, we'll keep that blank and our app.css block code snippet. Okay, so I think that might have been the issue. Um, and of course, we got logged out. Oh, yeah. Okay, no, it wasn't the issue. Um, awesome. So let's figure out what is going on there. Uh, it could be choices. Uh, this got auto made. Uh, this could definitely be the problem because I think these need to be a tuple. Uh, or a list of tuples, so it would actually be like this. Um, and we could make this, you know, an enum like we did before, but I don't imagine we're going to have these choices anywhere else. And we do need to give it a default equal to uh, Python, sure. Uh, we forgot a comma there. Okay, so we're back. Um, and did we add the code block? As, I think we did. So let's go down here and decide we want to add a code block, code snippet. And we could paste in our code here, def hello. Now, we can make uh, at some point this, uh, this formatting a little bit better, but this is fine. And obviously in our H, our block code, HTML, uh, I think it, it's just code, self dot, what do we call the actual thing? Self dot code. Uh, uh, template design exists, block slash code snippet, right. And what were we doing? Yeah, it needs to be block underscore code snippet dot HTML. And there we go, uh, def, hello, return world, whatever. Uh, and let's just put, uh, where is that code snippet? Let's put this inside dot container, dot container. Just so it is centered, there we go. Cool, we have that. Um, now I'm eventually gonna put a library like ace so that you know the code gets rendered properly. This, uh, um, in fact, I think, I think, can we do, pre-tags in here, or does that get escaped? Hey, <laughs> it looks terrible. Anyways, we'll, we'll um, I'll get to rendering that at some point, but let's get back to where we were before we kind of took a diversion. Uh, so we have this thing for headings. Oh my God. And 
and uh, let's make the heading right here. So we have heading, and let's just do my codes, uh, center, large, publish. Come back here. We're not going to have anything because we don't, we don't have um, anything for that. So uh, let's put our headings always inside a container so that they are within um, within that. Uh, we don't need a row or anything. Um, and what we can do is if self dot size is equal to small. All right, let's start with let's start with large. Makes the most sense. Then we'll do an h1 tag, um, and we will put in self dot body. I believe is what we called it, although it's been a little while. Uh, this is the heading block body. Yeah. Awesome. Um, and then I'm just going to copy this, paste it here, and we'll do L if size is equal to medium. And we'll just make it an H2. And then L if size is equal to small, what would you call it? Why not? An H3. And if, and we go like that. Uh, now we should see, there we go, my codes right there. And if we change, we, just, we made it large, so it's probably going to be an H1, as we can see there, H1. Perfect. Uh, obviously, we could test, but I will assure you it will work, H2 and H3. Now for the alignment, uh, we need to handle that. And really the easiest way to do that uh, with Bootstrap is we can actually just go text dash, and then we have um, self.alignment. Uh, and the bootstrap convention just happens to magically, maybe purposely, match up really well here so that um, it'll make it text center in this case. Uh, if we were to edit this and change it to, um, you know, right, we'll see it's text dash right. So everything is working beautifully. Okay, a few more little things, I think. Any other blocks that we might need? Um, similar to the divider block, I like to also have a spacer block. Um, and that can just go here, class spacer block, blocks.struct block. And all we're going to do is have a size, and we can use that thing we already have. This is why having that enum is super helpful, because um, you don't have to retype this a lot. Uh, so it's going to be a choice block, and the choices are literally just going to be size.choices. Uh, and we'll set a default equal to size.medium. And for our meta, we need to, of course, give it an icon. Um, and there's an icon called placeholder that works really well for this. Template equals block underscore spacer. Uh, so very quickly, hopefully in record time, we will do this. Block spacer.html. Trying to go fast, trying to go fast. Awesome. We have block spacer. And this will just, we're just going to have a div for this. And based on its uh, size, we can kind of give it more space. Um, so we can just kind of, in the class, we can say if self.size is equal to small. We can use a class of uh, p p y one, okay, and that will that's just a bootstrap thing, you know, padding uh, vertical, padding on the y axis of one. Um, and I realize I spelled self wrong. And let's copy this. Actually, let's uh, let's get rid of this and let's copy this and make this just an elif. If size is equal to medium, we will use p y three. And elif size is equal to large, we will use py5. Uh, so this will be our default because that's what we set. And then, of course, we need uh, end if. And that's it for the spacer. Um, I don't really need any CSS for the spacer. I still uh, I do like to keep these files um, because uh, they uh, just if we did want to do something with our spacer, we could. And it's already set up and good to go. So. 
uh, let's go over here and we will be logged out. And in fact, oh, in fact, we have an error. Uh, choice blocks. This should just be choice block. And we will be logged out. I will solve that at one point and I will teach everyone why it's happening. I, I don't think it's a normal thing. I think it's just because of my setup with Redis and all that kind of stuff that I'm using for caching. Uh, so maybe before our codes, we want to have a spacer. Uh, and uh, we missed, okay, we missed a couple things here. Uh, we need the spacer block, spacer, spacer block. And now that we have that, we do need to run a migration. Make migrations and migrate. And we'll refresh this. And as you know, and then uh, let's add our spacer yeah, above the title. So we have spacer, that's the icon that I chose. I think it's good for, uh, makes sense for this. And we could do large and let's just click preview. There we go. We forgot something. Uh, if, elif, elif, and if. Oops, that size. Uh, what did I do wrong? If this, what? Am I... Uh, what? Oh, if self is even a large. Like, did I... I actually don't know what's happening. Oh, <laughs> I'm missing, uh, I'm missing these guys. So now I forget where I put it, but probably right here. It looks like there's a spacer there. Um, if we were just to close this and change this to small, we'll see that there's just like less space now. Um, let's just see what, I think this is where it's supposed to be. Oh yeah, PY5. Okay, no, it, oh yeah, I'm in the preview. Hang on, preview. Yeah, why is it still PY5? I thought I made it small. Did I make it small? Uh, nope, I made the wrong thing small. I made the text small. Uh, let's go here, small, preview. That was not a coding error. That was just a administrative web error. Uh, so we should see here PY1 because it's small. So it's just that little bit of space, which sometimes is all you need to make your design look good, uh, which this you know design doesn't look good, but we're not focused on that right now. Center, publish, close, go back here. Oh, right. And now for what you've all been waiting for, the most important block for this site, because I plan on having YouTube videos on my site. So we're going to create something called video block and it's going to extend blocks dot struct block. Now we could get real fancy and like, you know, do like, um, you, yeah, like it's suggested right now, a URL block and like parse that URL to show a YouTube embed, all that kind of stuff. But Wagtail has something built in called an embed block. Now we do need to import that. Uh, it comes from, from wagtail.embed.blocks, import embed block. And we have an embed. Uh, what else might we want with this? Um, we might, you know, maybe we want to allow a transcript of it or something, but uh, I'm, I'm going to keep it really simple. Uh, so let's just have, let's literally just have that. Icon equals media, template equals block slash block video. It figured it out for us. Okay. New world record time, here we go. No, okay, failed. This will not be the world record. This will not be the world record. That's okay. Um, we're gonna make our CSS file though. Block video.scss. Awesome. And uh, in our app.css, we need that to go here. And back to this guy. We wanna make sure we're including video as an option. Yeah, so I can't type today, guys. Uh, I did not, it's not a world record, but we have it. And no module called wagtail.embed um, either. Yeah, yeah, it's wagtail.embeds. 
I believe. There we go. Now we will have to do a migration. Make migrations. Oh, Python, manage.py, make migrations. And of course, migrate it. Amazing. Uh, we will go back here and we will edit this and log back in. I'm really excited to solve this issue. And that's at the very bottom, add a video block. And let's just go to my videos and let's change it up and grab the uh, this URL because that's all it cares about, it's URL. Now the embed block works with YouTube, works with Vimeo, it works with many other things. So let's publish that and come back here. And if you're paying attention, you'll see uh, nothing, nothing showed up. And that's because we don't have anything here. If I put some text there, we will see it is there. Uh, so let's put this in a container so that it gets wrapped nicely. Now for this, um, doo -doo 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 -doo, what do we want? Uh, so we can use, there's a bootstrap helper for this. Uh, I am going to use it. Uh, so there's something called embed responsive. And I want to do embed responsive 16 by 9. It's kind of a weird name but it works. And then within here, uh, we can go, uh, we can use this helper. Uh, I will have to actually, sorry, import some some stuff here. We will need to load in wagtail, uh, wagtail core tags and wagtail embeds tags so that we can make use of this fancy word called embed, self.embed.url. And this does all the magic for us. If we were to refresh now, you'll actually see that. There's my YouTube video. It is right there. It is awesome. Uh, now, there might be cases where, similar to how we have a gallery, we might want to show multiple videos uh, together. So let's also make that one. Um, class video, uh, video list block, let's call it. And this will be blocks.struct block. And let's make something called videos. And this will be kind of similar. And look, it, <laughs> the AI figured it out for me. I think that's actually right. We're saying we want to like videos and it's going to be block.list block. And maybe we can also say we want to have this whole um, thing. We'll have a title, blocks.char block. Um, but I'm going to make required false. Maybe we don't always need a title. Uh, and then maybe we also have some text. Um, let's call it caption because that's what we've been kind of calling it blocks.text block. Uh, actually, we can use rich rich text block, also required null. Um, and is this how? Yeah, blocks.rich text block. Class meta um, icon. Let's use, we'll use media. We might be able to find a better one, but that's cool. And this will be block slash video list block.html. Okay, so we have that. And this time, time me, I'm going for the world record here. Even though this is a longer, longer one, we're gonna do it. Timer end. That, I know that wasn't that wasn't that fast. Python manage.py make migrations. No changes detected, and that's because we did not uh, not include it here. And we will be logged out. And after here, let's create a video list block and see if it works. Video list. Uh, my fave, favorite videos. And I will use the Canadian spelling. These are cool. And uh, yeah, so we should be able to just here throw in uh, throw in some videos. Uh, I don't know how I, I lost my YouTube. That's okay. 
let's just go and grab uh, grab a couple things here. Um, oops. Where are we? Where are we? Where are we? We'll grab that one, and we'll grab part two. I'm just making sure I copy the right part of the URL, and let's grab part three. Now, I think the embed block, built-in embed block, actually allows you to even uh, put a playlist, but I'm not going to get that fancy. And we will go and uh, let's try publishing this. Now, as we know, nothing's going to show up because we haven't made any HTML for this yet. Uh, it should be right under here, but let's get that going. Uh, blocks, just so we can see it, and video list block. We'll have there. So first of all, let's put it in a container, and we're gonna go if self title. That's what we called it, right? Yeah, self title. We can put a maybe like an h3 self title, and if, and then um, I think then the videos would go, and then after that, and I'm just gonna uh, I'll type it out, whatever. If self caption. And if, and we'll put that in a P tag, and it can just be on one line, self.caption. So let's just see if, first of all, that part worked. You'll see my favorite videos. These are cool, amazing. And I think we can also go text. Actually, we can probably just do this on the whole container, uh, text center, just to kind of center align those things. And you know, if we want to get really fancy, we could add settings for like is you know the alignment of the title and alignment of the caption, but screw that. Okay, so we have my favorite videos. These are cool. Then to actually get the videos, let's look at our image, our gallery blocks. It's going to be very similar to that. Uh, so what we can go is for block in self dot uh, videos. That's what we called it, and we'll just do our n four before we forget. And here, um, well, first of all, I probably want to have a row kind of surrounding this stuff. And then let's do a column. And let's do it as a column 12, but on it, let's do it as a column 4 on uh, larger screens. Uh, and this stuff will go inside the loop, so we have multiple. And then we can essentially, um, be, you know, we could write the code for that embed block that we already have. Um, or we can go... Uh, Oh, block dot render. I don't think that's right. I'm just going to accept that and see what that does. It's going to definitely throw an error. Look at that. It's like, I cannot do this. What is that? Um, so I think what we actually need, first of all, we need to import in at least this part. Uh, we don't need the images necessarily. Uh, so we'll load that. And uh, I think it's render render block and then the name of the, then the block itself. I think that's what it is. Um, render, what is it? Uh, render block, and this won't be, this will actually be like this. It's something like that. This might not work. Yeah, render block, uh, or wait for self, render block, block. Um, hang on, wagtail, render block. Or, oh, maybe it's include block. Um, I think that's what it is. There we go. But did it work? It did. So look at that. Uh, we didn't even have to write the code to do that embed uh, thing. Um, so just as a reference, block video. We kind of did this stuff where we did an embed responsive, did it a 60 by 9. Uh, we didn't do that here because we're running include block, which actually is going to include this whole thing, uh, which is pretty cool. Now, uh, the one downside is this is getting, um, there's kind of like a container inside a container now because uh, this thing has that container. So um, how do we solve that? We could, I mean, we could just, I think, I think we could just take this and instead of using the render block, just have this guy. And instead of doing this, we would actually go embed um, block.url. Let me just comment out that. Uh, embed block or embed block. 
Um, okay, so we have our block. Let's just. Um, oh, right. We do. Okay, if we're going to do it this way, we do need to load this. That could be the problem. Expected string block.url. .url. There we go. Oh, uh, no, it didn't work. It's close, though. Let's see what's happening here. Embed. So we have our, our thing, the responsive, but the actual. Um, the actual thing isn't happening there. Uh, embed for block and self dot videos. Uh, block dot video. What is the actual? Oh, block. I'm just gonna try it before I explain what's incorrect or correct. Yeah. Oh, I saw it. There it is. So now it's lining up properly there. Um, so we have to call block, which is that entire block, and inside the block there's a property, a database, you know, column called embed, and then we have to pass the URL. So it's instead of self, basically, block is here. So I like doing it that way. Uh, it was nice that we were able to recycle this, but then we kind of get that container within a container, and um, that just looks weird. Uh, so that's cool, and if we want to make the size different, and of course we can make this configurable, you know, we could have two in a row. Um, and there we go. Now uh, these columns, when they start to get stacked, it looks a little bit funny, so we can actually go py, um, just one, you know, give it some vertical padding so that they don't get stuck. Uh, nope, I want to do it on the column, py1. And that should, yeah, now there's a little bit of space and it's probably better if it's maybe py3. We can also do it with just like pb. Um, and in fact, that's that looks fine. I'm just gonna keep it like that for now. Um, maybe we will, maybe we'll do PB3 just so it's only adding it to the bottom. Yeah, that's fine. Then this is more center aligned. Um, and what we can do, I think on the row is actually do a text center. Is that the way you do it? If not, we'll figure it out. Uh, or, oh, oh, wait, I think it's justify content center. Yeah, there we go. So that's just a nice trick you can do on columns in Bootstrap. You can put a justify content center on the row. That way, when there's an uneven, like unmatching, it will you know center them nicely. And obviously, that looks better than than having that empty space. So there you have it. Um, we have uh, some stuff now. If I was actually building this for real, um, you know, we would you know add some an, an extra spacer in there and probably do some padding and that kind of stuff. But that's not really a problem for right now. All right, I'm gonna uh, wrap it. Wrap it there for this episode. Catch you soon.